Now I'm going to show you an application, uh, how to use the Piper tool together with the Piper Scalable HPM to perform child accident, accident reconstruction. And I'm going to guide you how to use the tool to do some child scalings using the child modules, frame-to-frame -frame positionings, joint positioning with a pre-positioning module, and surface <coughs> and volume smoothing with a smoothing volume. So we had uh, from the Casper project, uh, previous project, a database of accident reconstructions that was available. And this database included data on injury location and severity, and also a very in-depth car analysis. They also re-performed the physical accident in the lab by sitting Q3 and Q6 dummies. So we had readings from the dummies. So I'm going to show you the results of one of these accident reconstructions. And we selected case 2017 as an example. It involves a child of five years old, and it's a non-injurious case. Basically, the child was sitting on a low back booster, it was belted, and the belt worked as supposed, so it worked properly, the child was not injured. We still think that this case is interesting for future perspective, especially if we think about the generational risk injury curves, where we do need also reconstructions with non-injurious cases. So here, really briefly, the dynamic of the accident. We have a Megan Senik running into a standing Citroen Sarah at a speed of around 85 kilometers per hour. Uh, the, two, the two children were sitting on the rear of the car. We have a five-month child and a five-year-old child, so we're looking at the five-year-old child sitting on the right side rear seat of the Megan Senik. So to reconstruct the accident, we have several steps. The first one is to reproduce the car environment, and to do that, we use the Piper Simplified Car Environment. It is a generalized and parameterized model that contains most of the components of a general car. So what we did was to scale to uh, this generalized model um, to proper dimensions, so to represent our Megane Scenic number two. And then we matched a really simplified booster to, to take a look at interaction with the CRS. We also had to adapt the child model. Our baseline is a six years old, but we have here a five years old, so we are going to scale the model from six to five years old, and then we're going to position the model. Legs, arms, and heads, uh, we target the position of the dummy because we would like to compare the results from the dummies and our HPM. Finally, we're going to do the loading and the simulation. So here uh, is what we have for the reproduction of the car environment. We had estimations of measures uh, from pictures with different angles. We also had scans from the cars. So from comparison with scan and estimation from pictures, we could uh, produce the, the simplified en environment. As you can see, if I sit the child in the generalized environment, uh, the po it, it is out of position, so actually the legs are penetrating the seat, so we need to position the child. Uh, to do that, we calculated the kinematics chains for positioning, once again from pictures with different angles. So here you can see that we need to rotate the cervical spine, the head, the arms, and then the, the knee. So the first step is actually to perform some scaling. We have a six years old and we would like to produce a five years old. So we import the model, we click on project, import, import HPM. This is instantaneous. Then we click on the child module. Piper child scaling, and this window will appear where we will target a 60 month child. You have seen that before, and it just showed that it's instantaneous. After that, we're going to move to the pre positioning module that looks more or less like this. Uh, and we're going to rotate head and neck along the y axis of the cervical spine, and then we, this rotation will be followed by a rotation of the head. We're going to rotate along the y axis the glenohomeral joint so the shoulder here, and then the elbow joint. And finally, we're going to rot rotate lower extremities along the y-axis again of the knee joint. So first step, as uh, previously a previous presenter has said before, we need to fix the bones. So uh, we would like, as first step, to move head and neck. So we fix everything apart the cervical spine and the skull, because this is what we, what we would like to move. Then we click on frame-to-frame -frame positioning and we will position our uh, cervical spine with respect to the uh, global frame, rotating by the y-axis. So I'm going to generate a frame for each of the vertebras, and I do that to keep the relative angles between each of the vertebras. So what I'm doing is a rotation along the y-axis uh, with respect to the global frame, with this, uh, the cervical spine as if it was a rigid body, basically. After I do that, I fix also the cervical spine, and I go further, click once again on frame, 
and I move the, the skull, so this is a con con counterclockwise rotation of the head of 15 degrees, and I'm going to position the head. Here you see before and after, and you can see that actually the head is positioned in a slightly different position. So it's a small range of motion, we have 7 and 5 degrees. If I export the model as it is, unfortunately I have distortions on the mesh, I have negative volumes, and the model is not runnable. So I'm going to fix the mesh, moving to the smooth module, I'm going to do a smoothing of the surface and then smoothing of volume elements. As first, uh, I increase detection, so I click on increase detection and I select the part of the model I'm interested into. For example, the skin in this case, I move neck and head. I'm going to create the detection and then I'm going to click on smooth surface and smooth the surface. And here you can see some results. Before, uh, I had some distortions on the skin uh, around the neck and after the distortion is fixed. Following, I need to do some volume element smoothing, so I will click on smooth transformation. First, I will pick the part of the model I'm interested in. So I will click on picking, I will select the elements, I will blank what I'm not interested in, and I will get the add model. I will then select what I'm interested in, click on the smooth transformation, select the part of the bones and flesh I'm interested in, so skull, cervical spine, and flesh of the head, and I will smooth. The smoothing requires around five minutes, um, but it's, it's reasonable uh, fast. So you can see the results before and after the smoothing of the volume elements. The color code shows the quality of the elements, and the red ones are the ones that had negative volumes before, so not acceptable quality. And you can see that after the smoothing, there is no elements with no acceptable quality. So the smoothing actually worked pretty well. After the head and neck, we're going to move upper extremities, so same thing, I will move a little bit faster here. I fix the bones, everything apart from the upper extremities. This time, I will rotate joints, because I have joints in the model. So I will click on join, and I will select the glenohomeral joint, the elbow joint, and the wrist joint. I'm then going to move the glenohomeral joints, minus 12 degrees, and the elbow, plus 22. I select the wrist because of what Thomas was showing before to keep the angle with respect to the wrist and the elbow the same. So that target is actually zero, otherwise the model will float. This is before and after the positioning, so you can see that now the arms are extended. Once again, the model is not runnable if I export it as it is, so I have to perform surface smoothing. If you focus on the uh, elbow, you can see uh, how we can smooth the surfaces, and then once again, how we can smooth the elements the volume elements. So before we have some red elements, after that there is no elements with uh, not uh, sufficient quality. Last steps, positioning of the lower extremities. Once again, fix everything apart from what I'm interested in. Go to join again. This time it's going to be the knee and I fix the position of the ankle. So I'm going to keep the ankle joint the same. I will do a rotation of minus 13 degrees and then I will smooth surface and volume. Finally, I'm going to get a model that works, as it's positioned uh, as I would like. On the top, you can see the dummy in sitting in the car. On the bottom, you see uh, our uh, simplified environment and the child in the same position as the dummy sitting there. So we're going to now run the simulation. And as input, we have prescribed accelerations x, y, and z on the rigid part of the environment. We have simulation that run for 300 milliseconds. You see that not much happens after that. And as I s explained this morning, we have sensors that are implemented into the model. So we will look at accelerometers to measure head and uh, accelerations, neck force, moments, chest acceleration, and chest deflections, and compare that to the dummy. And we also have movies to check the kinematics. So really quick, uh, I will show you some of the performances for this accident reconstruction. This is the breakage, uh, the, the, the braking uh, phase of the car. So the arms are extended, uh, knees are extended. The uh, impact phase still looks like the HBM is performing pretty similar to the dummy, and the rebound phase, where we can start seeing some differences in the kinematics. Here you can see some of the cores from the accelerometers. Uh, black cores are from the Piper HBM, red cores are from the dummy. Uh, we have accelerometers in the head, thorax, and pelvis. Here you can see some performances where we can start seeing differences, especially in the z-axis. And here are sections for the neck and in the upper part of the neck, so this is C2, C3. 
where once again, black is Piper and red is the dummy. And we can see some differences, especially in the moment, momentum of the neck. And so to conclude really briefly, we can show that curves are fairly similar. Uh, what we see is that there are some different performances. The model shows a higher Z acceleration for the head. And this is probably due to the fact that we have a much more flexible uh, neck. So we actually can see this wipe movement that generates, uh, the, the rebound is much faster for the head in the HBM than in the dummy, so it generates higher Z accelerations. Also, we can see momentum on the neck, so a torque, higher torque in the neck of the HBM with respect to the, uh, to the dummy. Once again, probably more uh, flexible neck. And although the chest deflection curve looked pretty similar, we can actually see that there is almost one centimeter of difference there. It may be indicating a different interaction with the belt or different performances of the model. So what I wanted to show you with this brief demo is that we actually can use the Piper 2 uh, together with the Piper scalar mo model to perform everyday applications that are interesting for us in the field of biomechanics. The scaling is instantaneous. You have seen that before. The position is really intuitive and really fast. You have seen that before as well. And the neck of the bottle is the smoothing currently. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but it's a very effective smoothing transformation. So what you can, uh, you, it's really effective in correcting distortions. And with this, I thank you, and I will pass to Jeremy.